Welcome to Lucari's Quest, the journey of ancient mysteries and secrets. Early morning in the village. Nkari is preparing for the day's adventure, packing his small bag as his mother watches, concern on her face. His mother cautions, Nkari, don't wander too far. The forest is vast, and it's easy to lose your way. Nkari, confident and smiling, replied, I'll be careful, mother. I'll be back before sunset. Nkari heads out, his energy high, greeting villagers as he walks toward the edge of the village. He is excited for another day of exploration. Nkari ventures deeper into the forest, full of excitement. He jumps over streams, examines plants, and listens to the songs of birds. The world around him is alive, and he feels a sense of wonder. Nkari's heart raced with excitement as he ventured deeper into the forest. Every step brought new discoveries, new sights, sounds, and smells. But the deeper he went, the less familiar the forest became. The forest gradually thickens, the sunlight dims as the trees grow closer together, and the sounds of nature become more distant. Inkari starts to notice that the path he was on seems to disappear. Inkari muttered to himself, I know this path, don't I? He looks around, feeling unsure for the first time. The mood shifts subtly, and the forest seems to close in around him. Nkari tries to retrace his steps, but finds himself disoriented. Nkari, frustrated, asks, Which way was it again? He quickens his pace, looking in every direction, but the more he walks, the more lost he becomes. Nkari, now feeling a wave of panic, sits down on a large rock, breathing heavily. The once familiar forest now feels ominous and strange. He looks around, hoping to see something recognizable, but there is nothing. The forest, once full of wonder, now felt like a trap. Nkari had lost his way, and with it, his sense of direction and safety. Nkari stands, calling out into the silence, Hello? Is anyone out there? His voice echoes through the trees, but there is no response. Inkari, exhausted and anxious, sits on a fallen log. The forest is eerily quiet, with only the sound of rustling leaves. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps catches Inkari's attention. He looks up, startled, as an old man appears from behind the trees. The man is unfamiliar, his presence calm yet mysterious. He holds a walking stick and moves slowly, his face kind but weathered. You seem lost, young one, said the old man calmly. Nkari stands quickly, surprised by the sudden appearance of the old man, hesitant but relieved. Yes, I've lost my way. Can you help me find the village? I can. But first, walk with me. The old man replied, nodding and gesturing for him to follow. Nkari, unsure but hopeful, follows the old man as they begin walking deeper into the forest. As they walk together, the old man speaks softly, his words carrying a weight of wisdom. Nkari listens intently, eager for guidance. There is a word, though not spoken much anymore. Sha Abatani, said the old man thoughtfully. Nkari's eyes widen as he recognizes the word. I've heard that before in the Bible, said Nkari. It was when the Savior cried out on the cross, and it means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I often wondered about that phrase, which is being interpreted as used in that passage. The old man nods knowingly. Yes, that is the translation many know. But the original words tell a different story. His pace steady as they walk. The Shah or Sa sounds mean save or saved or joy. You will find the Shah or Sa sound in the various renderings of Savior, beginning with Ishor, used for the Creator in Kim language, which is also used as the Aramaic word for Savior. Isa, with the Say sound, 
is the word for savior in Arabic. Ishi, another word with the Shah sound, means head in Nkem language and is the name of the creator and savior mentioned in Hosea 2.16. The reference to head pints to his position as the captain, head of salvation. In Hosea 2, the one who was previously called Bali, O Lord, will be called Ishi in the day of salvation. Ishi is a popular name in Nkem land and used for people, towns, and villages. Now looking at the word Sha Abatani, Shij or Sha means save, Tan means lost, Abatan means the lost, where Abba is a prefix indicating plural, people, Sha Abatani, therefore translate as save the lost. Relating to the cry of the Savior in the New Testament Bible, he cried for the saving of the lost. Lama means to prepare. So he prepared a Shabbat, like seen in Hebrews 4.9. Yes, Shabbat or Sabbath is the shortened form of Shabbatan. And the usual response to Shabbat greeting by modern Jews today is Shalom, meaning salvation has arrived in our Nkem language. But this truth is still largely unknown today. Shabbatan is a plea to save the lost, rather than a cry of forsakenness, as translated using the cry of David from Psalm 22. Nkari processes this, the realization dawning on him. So it wasn't just a cry of abandonment. It was a call to save those who had lost their way, like me right now, Nkari reflects. Exactly, the old man replied, smiling. It is a call for salvation not only for the one who is lost, but for all. In helping others, we save ourselves. This is the deeper meaning of Shabbatan, not often spoken, but its truth remains. The forest slowly begins to open up, the path becoming clearer as they walk. Nkari contemplates the old man's words, feeling the weight of the wisdom he's been given. I never saw it that way, it makes so much more sense now, Ankari says quietly. Many things do when you are ready to hear them, the old man replied kindly. The village appears in the distance, and Ankari breathes a sigh of relief. The old man slows his pace as they near the edge of the forest. Thank you. You've saved me, Ankari says gratefully. The old man smiles warmly, but shakes his head slightly. You saved yourself, Nkari, the old man replies gently. Always remember, salvation comes to those who seek it with an open heart. Nkari turns to ask the old man his name. But when he looks back, the old man has already turned and disappeared into the shadows of the trees. Nkari stands there for a moment, processing what just happened before heading toward the village. Back in the village, Nkari sits outside his family's house, looking out at the forest in the distance. The warmth of home surrounds him, but his thoughts are still on the old man's words. Nkari returned home that day, but with a deeper understanding. The meaning of Shabbatain gives hope, and the assurance that we are not forsaken, and there is salvation for our people. Nkari gazes out at the horizon, reflecting on his journey.